hi in this video let's start with the next set of questions starting with the age of a child approximate age by the time first eight anterior teeth are present maxillary central lateral mandibular central lateral in four quadrants so if you look into the age of eruption by six to seven years lower central incisors are erupting by seven to eight years lower laterals and upper centrals and by eight to nine upper laterals as well so by age of eight you can see a presence of all eight anterior teeth canines lower canine nine to ten years upper canine around 11 to 12 years so uh, by eight years at least you will find all eight anterior teeth especially centrals and laterals and for canines as we discussed lower canine it will be around 9 to 10 years upper canine it will be around 11 to 12 years right now moving on to the next topic hemolytic disorder of newborn which we have discussed in detail previously as well so erythroblastosis fetalis so why does it occur it's simply because of sensitization of mother's immune system if mother is rh negative and the fetus is RH positive because of the father's trait there can be this hemolytic disorder of newborn so mother is RH negative and fetus is RH positive in such combinations usually uh, the at the time of first delivery the sensitization is minimal but during a second delivery there can be this manifestation hemolytic disorder of newborn or erythroblastosis fetalis there is excess proliferation of immature blood cells in the fetus because of destruction of RBCs. Right? We have discussed in detail uh, elsewhere. So we'll move on to the next topic. IGRA. It's used in diagnosis of tuberculosis. We'll go through some literature. Interferon gamma radioassay. It's used for diagnosis of TB, hepatitis, syphilis, HIV. So diagnostic tests for tuberculous infections are used worldwide to detect individuals with active disease and prevent spread of TB. Currently, there are two types of tests that can screen individuals who may have active tuberculosis. These tests are tuberculin skin test, TST, and two different assays that measure gamma interferon, IFN gamma, from the patient's lymphocyte after exposure to specific TB antigens. Both of these tests measure the immunological response of host to specific TB proteins. So, uh, TST was uh, first uh, developed by Mantox way back in 1908. He based this test on the work of Robert Koch, right? So this IGRA assay is used for diagnosis of tuberculosis, right? Now moving on to the next topic, pertinent the placement of crowns. So crown is placed on two adjacent primary molars. So if that's the case, how do you place the crowns? Anterior one first followed by posterior vice versa or both crowns simultaneously so if you refer literature it's clearly mentioned that when you're going for quadrant dentistry the following clinical considerations are very important when a quadrant dentistry is practiced stainless steel crowns are to be placed on adjacent teeth few points which have to be considered include prepare the occlusal reduction of one tooth completely before beginning the other as there is tendency to and you reduce both when reduction on them is done simultaneously so during tooth preparation occlusal reduction it has to be uh, done on one tooth first followed by the other tooth you reduce the adjacent proximal surface of teeth being restored more than when only one tooth is restored comparatively the greater reduction will ease the placement of crowns and interproximal approximation and most importantly relevant to our uh, discussion now both crowns should be trimmed contoured and prepared for cementation simultaneously to allow for adjustments in the interproximal spaces and establish proper contact areas right so this is the uh, literature which suggests the fact that we have to place especially uh, when you're going for uh, covering uh, primary molars with stainless steel crowns place both the crowns simultaneously right i hope it's clear now moving on to the next topic diabetes complications 
So as you know, there are numerous complications, microvascular, macrovascular, miscellaneous complications. So microvascular complications include diabetic nephropathy, neuropathy, uh, retinopathy, which are main microvascular complications induced by chronic hyperglycemia. Macrovascular complications, atherosclerosis, and miscellaneous complications, diabetic cardiomyopathy, etc. In fact, we have discussed about, in our very first study club discussion, we have discussed about diabetes and its complications as well, right? Now, moving on to the next topic. First step in biomedical waste management. So, 2016, there are new rules and regulations. Uh, previously in 1998 we had set of rules now upgraded set of rules uh, available in government website uh, 2016 rules which state that there are certain duties of occupier and the operator of uh, biomedical waste right so we'll go through those duties but we'll go through the first duty because the question seems to be what should be the first step in biomedical waste management so in duties of operator it's clearly uh, i mean duties of occupier it's clearly mentioned that take all necessary steps to ensure that biomedical waste is handled without any adverse effect to human health and environment and in accordance with these rules and in duties of operator it's clearly mentioned that take all necessary steps to ensure that biomedical waste collected from the occupier is transported, handled, stored, treated and disposed of without any adverse effect to human health and environment in accordance with these rules and guidelines issued by central government or as a case maybe the central pollution control board from time to time. So along with that you can also see the set of rules and just go through them and if you find these rules relevant to the topic which we are discussing it's fine or else do let me know we will update in our description part of the video if at all there is any addition required fine. Moving on to the next topic, proton pump inhibitors, the best given before meal or they are effective before meal, after meal, I think there is a question in those lines. So proton pump inhibitors. Are they effective before meal or after meal? So when reviewing literature, it's clearly mentioned that proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, lansoprazole, etc. They have better acid suppression when taken before a meal than without a meal, right? Now, next question pertaining to finish line configuration in case of metal ceramic restoration, right? So which finish line is preferred for metal ceramic sub gingivally on the buccal side so if you look into the table it's clearly given that shoulder is something which is indicated on facial margin of metal ceramic crowns right uh, whereas in case of metal ceramic the lingual we go for chamfer whereas sloped shoulder is indicated in case of facial margins of metal ceramic crowns shoulder with bevel facial margin of posterior metal ceramic crowns with supra gingival margins now when comparing shoulder with sloped shoulder, which one would you prefer? It has to be sloped shoulder because it's clearly mentioned that 120 degree sloped shoulder would eliminate unsupported enamel. A 120 degree sloped shoulder is used as an alternative to 90 degree shoulder for facial margin of metal ceramic crown. The sloped shoulder reduces the possibility of leaving unsupported enamel and yet leaves sufficient bulk to allow thinning of metal framework to a knife edge for acceptable aesthetics. But if you look into bevel shoulder, as we discussed previously in the table, it's clearly mentioned that it's indicated in posterior teeth in supragingival margins. A beveled shoulder margin is often recommended for facial surface of metal ceramic restoration where a collar is used. The beveling removes unsupported enamel and may allow some finishing of metal. However, a shoulder or sloped shoulder is preferred for biologic and aesthetic reasons. Right? This allows improved aesthetics because the metal margin can be thin to a knife edge and hidden in the sulcus without the need for positioning the margin closer to epithelial attachment. So the answer, a more appropriate answer would be sloped shoulder in case of a margin selection for metal ceramic restorations on the facial side. If at all you are planning uh, subgingival margins. Usually we go for subgingival in aesthetic areas, isn't it? But in posterior areas we do go for uh, supragingival margins where aesthetics is not a prime consideration, right? Moving on to the penultimate topic. 
elements and their karyogenic potential so when reviewing literature in one of the articles it's clearly mentioned that molybdenum has been associated with reduced caries prevalence whereas selenium and lead have appeared to be having adverse effects in terms of uh, forming caries so molybdenum has been associated with reduced caries prevalence whereas selenium and lead appear to have adverse effects as you know fluoride anti-karyogenic and if you look into other elements, low prevalence with, was associated with rising concentrations of, I mean low prevalence of caries, was associated with rising concentrations of calcium, magnesium, molybdenum, vanadium, while concentrations of copper, iron, manganese were higher in the samples with high caries prevalence. A strong inverse relation was found between caries prevalence and the contents of strontium, barium, potassium, magnesium, calcium and lithium. Probably nickel has a negative association with caries while zinc, iron, manganese, cadmium, lead and copper are positively associated with dental caries. So this is some literature which I found in few articles but as a summary you can take this. Molybdenum has been associated with reduced caries prevalence whereas selenium and lead appear to have adverse effects. Right. Now moving on to the final topic, dissociative anesthesia. Ketamine. So this has been a routine a question which uh, we have seen several times previously as well. So ketamine it induces a so-called dissociative anesthesia which means profound analgesia, immobility, amnesia with a light sleep and feeling of dissociation from one's own body and surroundings nirvana kind of thing so the primary site of action is in the cortex and subcortical areas not in the reticular activating system respiratory is not depressed airway reflexes are maintained and muscle tone increases heart rate cardiac output and bp are elevated due to sympathetic stimulation the above effects are produced with a minute within a minute and recovery starts after 10 to 15 minutes but the patient remains amnesic for about one to two hours and you can find plenty of information about ketamine in any pharmacology textbook, I'm sure. And as a summary, dissociative anesthesia is seen with ketamine, right? So these are some of the topics you wanted to highlight in this video. And so far, we have covered around 150 plus topics. So in the coming videos, we'll try to incorporate uh, the bulk mode where we'll discuss as many questions as possible in a different format. I hope it's clear.